Welcome back to the third and final part of our Bengali kitchen setup series. In today's video, we will talk about one of the most requested topics, kitchen tools. In parts 1 and 2, we spoke about the Bengali pantry, listing both dry and fresh ingredients. In case you've missed those videos, we'll leave links for you in the description. A kitchen tool is anything you use in the kitchen to cook food. While having the right equipment for the right job does make life easier, at the end of the day, a kitchen tool is just a vehicle for your skills. Not everybody needs everything. With that in mind, we have classified this list into three broad categories. And if you have been following along this series from the beginning, you must be familiar with the basic expert and ninja tags. It is worth stressing that you can cook delicious food even without a lot of these tools. Tools are just a matter of convenience. As always, the complete list of all our kitchen tools is on our website at bongeets.com/kitchen, where we've also linked whatever products we could find online, both in India and the US. For the sake of transparency, those are all affiliate links, which means you pay the same price, but we get a small commission for anything that you buy through those links. Please understand that we are not asking you to buy any specific brand. We are just sharing with you what we use in our kitchen, since a lot of you ask. So without further ado, let's begin. If you were setting up a kitchen from scratch, a kadai is one of the first things you'd buy. You must be wondering why we are showing you this aluminium kadai and not the steel one you see in our videos. Well, that is because the stainless steel kadai is not what we use for our daily cooking at home. The reason you see it in our videos is because it is induction friendly, which allows our cooking setup to be more portable when filming videos. We do love the stainless steel kadai, but because it has an induction base, it suffers from what we think is the biggest disadvantage in a kadai. It has a flat bottom. A traditional kadai by contrast has a rounded bottom which is perfect for our style of cooking for three reasons. In a kadai there are no sharp corners. This means that the khunti or spatula can sweep over the entire surface if you move it at a tangent. This is not possible in a flat base pan where spices are more likely to accumulate and catch at the unreachable corners. For any recipe that requires the braising of spices or mashla kashano a kadai is a better option. You need less oil to cook in a kadai. Because a kadai is a hemisphere, you can achieve the same depth using less oil when compared to a flat vessel. To create a 1 cm deep layer of oil in a flat pan, you will need much more oil than in a kadai. This is great not only for braising but also for deep frying. When buying a kadai, invest in one that is thick. A thick vessel retains heat and can maintain a temperature far better, so your food is less likely to catch and burn. Buy at least two kadais. One big for fried rice, pulao, chicken and meat and a smaller one for frying fish, pakoras, luchi or making ucche bhaja, shak bhaja etc. Also, get tight fitting lids for your kadai. One of the questions we get asked most frequently is how come your food doesn't stick to your pan in spite of not using non-stick cookware? That is because we cook most things on low to medium flame with a lid on. This is a good habit to inculcate as it is not only more energy efficient than cooking open pot on a high flame but also lets you cook using less oil. A frying pan is useful for so many things. Frying porota, frying egg, making an omelet, pati shapta, pancakes or even for shallow frying something like shami kebab. We have a heavy thick bottom steel frying pan as well as a thin light carbon steel frying pan which is ideal for high heat fast cooking such as in a dal torka or stir fry. If you make roti at home, it is best to get a dedicated flat iron tawa. Our cast iron skillet doubles as a tawa when we need it. A heavy iron skillet, although it takes a long time to heat up, retains that heat for a long time. Over time and use, a cast iron skillet becomes nearly non-stick. It is heavy duty, so it doesn't get damaged easily and will last you a lifetime or even generations when maintained well. A good investment if you ask us. Then you will need a small to medium sized saucepan or dekchi to boil dal or milk. You will also need a larger dekchi, boiling pot or hari for boiling things in large quantities say rice, khichuri or stock. An Indian or South Asian kitchen is incomplete without a pressure cooker. It saves time and energy when cooking dal and meat. Once you have the basic cooking utensils, you might also consider a steamer which can be used for momos, tingmos, idlis, etc. We also use ours to steam potatoes when we don't want them to turn mushy, for example, for aloo porota fillings or for chops. Steaming keeps the potatoes dry and fluffy. Since we are on the topic of steaming, consider picking up a stand like this. This one came with a pressure cooker, but you can buy a similar one quite cheaply. It is great for cooking something in a water bath such as ilish bhape, dhokla or steamed puddings. 
it raises the dish off the base of the pot, allowing the water to circulate freely around it. The last thing in this section is an electric kettle. We've not included many of our electrical appliances on this list, but the kettle is an exception. You need hot water in the kitchen throughout the day, not only for tea and coffee, but for cooking. We almost never add cold water when cooking, especially when frying or braising or in the jhol. Using hot water in your cooking is a good practice as it prevents the temperature of your pan from dropping and halting the cooking process. Boiling water over a gas stove is very energy inefficient and inconvenient. An electric kettle is indispensable to our kitchen. A perfect complement to your kodai is a flat metallic khunti or spatula. The central technique to cooking Bengali or other South Asian food is koshanu or bhuna, the process of braising spices, onion, ginger, garlic, etc. in oil until it loses moisture, caramelizes and becomes almost jam-like. A flat, thin metallic khunti is essential for this. Besides that, the thin blade of the khunti helps you stir without damaging delicate vegetables or fish. The khunti is our tool of choice for daily cooking. We use a wooden spatula in our videos only because the sound of steel scraping against steel would give you and us a headache. Because the kodai has a round bottom, it is unsteady. So with your kodai, you'll also need a sharashi. A sharashi helps you steady the pan while stirring and also enables you to transport it while hot from one spot to another. A jhajri or perforated spoon is useful when deep frying as it allows the oil to drain through its pores. Then you will need large serving spoons and a dabba hata. This is great for ladling runny or soupy liquids like dal or khichdi. A wooden spatula. We gave it a bad rap earlier, but it is useful if you don't want to scratch your delicate non-stick pans. This rubber spatula is another one of our favorite kitchen tools. Its flexible blade allows you to cleanly transfer things from one vessel to another. It is also important for folding fluffy egg whites when baking. If you bake often, you'll need a balloon whisk. We use ours not just for creaming butter, mixing batters or beating egg whites to a stiff peak, but in the absence of a daler kata, it doubles as a beater to whisk dal for certain recipes. Tongs are very useful when handling things that are too hot to hold with your hands. They are great for turning roti over the flame, frying papor, fishing things out from hot liquids, and even serving noodles or pasta. To make luchi, kochuri, or roti, you need a chaki beluni set. Rolling out dough is a skill you develop with practice, but it's important to use a rolling pin you are comfortable with. Try out a few before deciding which one suits you best. Remember, the wand chooses the wizard. A large steel mixing bowl or gamla is extremely useful when it comes to kneading dough, marinating fish or meat, mixing batters and soaking vegetables or grains. Besides that, medium to small bowls are useful for mixing small quantities of spices or for temporarily storing things you need to set aside while cooking. These can be the steel serving bowls you already have at home. We personally like to keep a few ceramic or glass bowls because they can also be used in the microwave and as serving bowls. For powders and pastes, you will need a set of grinding tools. If you are the kind of whisk comfortable with a shield noda, go for it. It is still the best and most versatile tool available for making the smoothest pastes. Then there's a hamaldista or mortar pestle. It is perfect for coarsely grinding small quantities of whole spices like kalojire, radhuni, pepper or making smooth pastes of green chilli, ginger and garlic. We use it all the time in our kitchen mostly because it is quick to use and easy to clean. There are two important things you must look for when buying a motor and pestle. One, it should be solid and heavy and two, it should have a rough rather than a smooth and polished finish. For larger quantities of spices or for things like posto or shorshe bata, a motor and pestle just won't do. You need an electric grinder. Be it grinding dal for dhoka, or peas for karai shoti kochuri, or meat for shami kebab, a grinder is very convenient. Besides the regular grinder, you might also consider keeping a small dry grinder for spice blends like garam masala or bhaja masala. It allows you to prepare these blends in small quantities so that they don't lose their smell from being stored too long. First, you will need a fine tea strainer for tea or for sifting very fine spice powders such as cardamom powder. Second, you should have at least one large strainer or colander. For full and effective drainage, we find a mesh strainer is superior and more versatile than a perforated metal one. 
A mesh strainer is ideal for separating liquids from solids such as the yakni or stock when making a meat pulao or biryani. It is perfect for washing vegetables or grains under the tap. You can use it to spread vegetables or rice to air dry after washing them. You can also use it to hold fried foods right off the oil. The strainer allows the steam from the food to escape so that they don't lose their crunchiness due to condensation. And of course, it is also great for sifting flours for baking etc. To make cheese like chana or paneer, you will need a fine mesh cheese cloth. A strainer or colander won't work in this case. Viewers of this channel will also be familiar with this jhuri or wicker basket. A jhuri is an all-rounder. We hold fried foods fresh off the oil in it. We also use it as a strainer. It is particularly great for straining a large quantity of rice if you have guests over. You can use it to store your potatoes, onions, ginger and garlic too. The next important device is a funnel. It is small, light and usually cheap. Excellent for transferring things into narrow bottles or jars without making a mess. Highly recommend having one around. We love coffee and love our South Indian coffee filter. It consists of an upper perforated chamber that holds ground coffee beans and a lower collection chamber that collects the decoction. If you want to understand how to use it properly, check out our filter coffee video. In order to cook, you need to prep the ingredients, that is peel, chop, slice and dice them first. For this, you need a good sharp knife or boti, whichever you are comfortable using. If there is one item on this list we would not compromise on, it is our chopping tool. Whether you use a boti or a knife, get one that is made from good quality steel, maintains its sharp edge over multiple uses, can be sharpened and most importantly, one that you are comfortable using. Ok, one word of advice. When buying a knife, stay away from buying knife sets. They are a waste of money. You don't need 5 mediocre knives. Spend that money instead on one great knife. For 99% of our chopping tasks, we use this knife. We bought it in Calcutta 5 years ago for around 3000 rupees after saving up for it. Even though we have not taken as good care of it as we probably should have, it has remained sharp in 5 years of using it. With a good knife, you need the right chopping surface. Do not cut against stone, concrete or glass, it will damage the blade. Wooden or plastic chopping boards are ideal. Plastic chopping boards are extremely low maintenance and cheaper, even though they are not as good as wooden chopping boards. We use our plastic chopping board every day. Wood or bamboo boards are great, but they need a bit more maintenance than plastic. When handling a sharp knife, you need a steady chopping surface. To prevent your board from slipping or sliding, place a towel under the board to steady it. Cutting over an unstable board can be extremely dangerous. You should also keep a peeler for potatoes, carrots, jhinge and even cheese. If you have a good chef's knife and want to get a second knife, buy a small sharp paring knife which can be used for peeling or cutting small things. If you cut whole chicken or meat with bones at home, don't use your pricey chef's knife for this. Buy a heavy cleaver. The cleaver does not have to be very expensive or super sharp, it just needs to be heavy and the steel should be hard enough not to bend or break when hacking into bones. A serrated knife is optional but great for slicing crusty breads or for clean thin tomato slices. A bench scraper is useful to move your chopped ingredients from the boat to the bowl or pan. It is also good for portioning dough for breads. Then you also want to keep a grater to grate carrots, onions, ginger, cheese or make orange or lime zest. A narkel kurani is used to grate coconut. If you don't have one, you can grate coconut in a grinder, but the narkel kurani does make life a lot simpler. It is quite possible to slice uniformly with a sharp knife or boti, but a slicer makes the job much easier and quicker. It is great when making beguni or alur chips for example. In fact, we also make jhuri alu bhaja by slicing the potato first and then cutting it into strips. This produces a superior result. Finally, scissors. From cutting open packets to snipping twine, a pair of scissors is always handy. We like to keep a clean pair specifically for use in the kitchen. We always divide our dough by cutting it rather than stretching and tearing it by hand so that the well rested relaxed dough doesn't get overworked and become springy again. If you are a long time viewer, you know that our preferred measuring tool is a weighing scale. We use it mainly because weight measurements are more accurate than volume measures like cups or spoons. It makes it possible for you to create solid recipes that you can share with others with confidence. To measure small weights that a kitchen scale may not register or to follow along with recipes that use volume measurements, you can get a set of measuring cups and spoons. 
A measuring jug is handy not only for quickly measuring liquids, but because it has a handle and a spout, it makes pouring liquids easier. We prefer one that is microwave safe so that you can heat the liquid in the same jug after you measure it. There are various kinds of thermometers for specific cooking needs, but a basic probe thermometer can play multiple roles. It reduces guesswork when cooking, be it to measure the temperature of oil for frying or to check the internal temperature of steaks or roasts. A thermometer is also the best way to know when a bread or a cake is done so that it is perfectly cooked yet moist inside. Rubber bands are useful for a number of things around the house. Keep some in a specific place in the kitchen so that you don't have to hunt for one when you need to tie up open packets and so on. You'll occasionally need a spool of cotton thread or twine. Very useful if you want to tie up banana leaf parcels for kolapaturi or truss meat for roasts. For storing cooked food or leftovers, consider investing in a set of airtight storage containers. Cooked food, if left open in the fridge, tends to pick up smells from the other food. We like glass containers because these can be put directly in the microwave from the fridge. Most of you will already have a spice box like this. It is very common all over India and used to store spices that you most commonly use in your cooking. Ice trays are useful not only for ice, but if you saw last week's video, also to store ginger paste, leftover mustard or poppy paste, etc. If you have extra chicken or shrimp stock, that too can be stored in an ice tray and used whenever necessary. A bottle opener is handy for opening cold drinks and other <coughs> bottles. You definitely need a set of bajarer bags. Please don't go to the market empty handed. Take these with you to avoid accumulating unnecessary plastic. We like these cloth ones as these can be washed easily. Also, keep a bajarer bag in your side bag or backpack in case you need to buy something on your way home. For your occasional baking needs, you will need baking tins. If you had to buy just one kind to start off your collection, go with a simple round metal tin. It will cover a range of needs as it can be used for cakes, pies, roast potatoes, etc. And if you are into baking bread, meatloaf or cake loaves, consider getting a loaf tin. For roasting or grilling, you will need a roasting tin with a grill. The roasting tin can also double as a cookie sheet if you don't have a dedicated one for that purpose. And you will of course need a pair of thick mittens to handle hot cake pans or roasting tins. Baking paper is used to line the base and sides of your baking tins. It prevents your cake from sticking to the tin and makes it easy to remove it from the pan cleanly. If you would like to make kebabs in the oven, you will need a set of bamboo skewers. These need to be soaked in water for 30 minutes before using or they will char and break in the oven. Cling film or plastic wrap is a useful thing to have in the kitchen. Sometimes, if you have to refrigerate food in a bowl that does not have a fitting lid, cling film can come to the rescue. Aluminium foil is great to cover and wrap food. It can be used to create airtight seals if you want to steam or cook something on dam. With that, we've reached the end of the series. What would you add to this list? Let us know in the comments. The full list with links to products wherever possible is on our website at bongeats.com slash kitchen. We hope you found the series useful. If you know someone who's setting up a kitchen, please share these videos with them. See you next week with a brand new recipe.